Hi, and welcome to part four of this lecture. In this part, we're going to talk about one hot assignment. One hot assignment is another way to assign codes to each of the states. So for example, we might have four states that we want to use, which is Y3, Y2, Y1, and Y0, as shown here. And we could assign them to these four codes. And notice that these codes, we have one of the bits only being one, and all the other bits are zero. So this is why we call it one hot, because one of them is on, and then the others are not we have four states and four codes, each of which only have a single bit being high. And by doing this, we really only have to include the variable that is one in the equations. And sometimes it can actually make it simpler. So for example, we have the state code 0001, which really should be represented by this expression, not Y3, not Y2, not Y1 and Y0. But in fact, if you just said it means Y0 is on and then the others are all off, because of knowing ahead of time that we're using this one hot assignment, then we have don't cares next to the other state values. And it is said that this can provide some simplified analysis and design. It may mean that the combinational logic is actually simpler, but the flip-flops may cost more because in this case, we're going to need four flip-flops to hold this. We obviously need one flip-flop to hold the state of each bit. So we're going to need four flip-flops where in the previous examples of counting order and gray code, we actually only needed two flip-flops and we could hold up to four states. And so there may be some trade-off here that we have a design that can have simplified combinational logic, but more flip-flops. And so the design may or may not have a lower cost depending upon the cost of the individual components, but we need to analyze this nonetheless. So we go back to our state diagram from before, which has the four states, A, B, C, D, and we're looking for the sequence of one, one, zero, one in order to give this one output. This is a state diagram that we've analyzed before. And in the one hot assignment, we assign each state to a flip-flop. And then now we're gonna look at the resulting coded state table. And so based upon this state diagram, we have A, B, C, and D, and write these codes out. And then the next state from the state diagram, A goes to A, B goes to A, C goes to D, and D goes to A. And there's a one, A goes to B, B goes to C, C goes to C, and D goes to B. I won't worry about drawing out the output. Here it is written much more cleanly, easy to understand. I've written in brackets the letters because usually you wouldn't actually put these in the table as well as the binary codes. You'd only put the binary codes. So it would look something like this, but I've left the letters in to make it a bit easier to understand, although it's not really your traditional typical state table. All right, so let's use those new codes that we have for the different states. And the next slide, can be a little bit overwhelming because you need to have the k-maps for the four flip-flops plus the output. So on the left-hand side here, I've written what the inputs are. That is zeros here and ones here. And then I have the input values y3, y2, y1, and y0. And then the d3, d2, d1, d0 for the flip-flops. Notice these don't care conditions. This is important for optimizing the final circuit. The reason I have bolded some of these on the left-hand side is that they correspond with output values that we actually do care about. All the rest have don't cares in them. So for example, we have lots of don't care conditions here, mainly because we have, for example, two ones, which doesn't happen in one hot assignment. We only have one one. An example would be these ones that are bolded where there is only one one. That's the only time we have an output that we actually care about. The other ones will have all XXXX because we don't care about it. And then that's transferred onto these K-maps on the right-hand side. And because the K-maps have five variables, I have to draw it like this. I have to have it as when X is equal to zero and when X is equal to one. And this is all one big K-map for D zero. That's like it's grouped together, almost like a, a third dimension to the K-map which you can actually join up if necessary. There aren't any on any of these examples, but it is possible to have connections between one dimension and the other in the same way that you can wrap the corners and wrap left to right. 
but it's beyond the scope of this subject. For the moment, we can draw a rectangle here around eight terms and an eight for D3 and an eight for the output Z. And this is mainly because of all of these don't cares. It makes it easier to draw the larger rectangles. So now when we take those rectangles from the K-maps and write out what the equations are, they will look like this. So D3 and Z are relatively straightforward, the same as D0. We have when X is false and Y2 is true, X is false, Y2 is true, and where X is true and Y3 is true, X is true, Y3 is true. For D1 and D2, if we have a look at the state table, so for D1 it's as if it's the one that looks after B and Y0 and Y3 is the ones that input for A and D. Have a look for B when we have the input being one, that is here, and we have the previous state being A or the previous state being D, then we move to B. We have B flip-flop coming true. So you could say this was Y0, this was for Y3, and then this was for D1. So D1 is true when X is true and either Y0 is true or Y3 is true and D2 is somewhat similar. It's for when X is true and when Y1 is true or Y2 is true. So we get a gate cost then of two plus four plus four plus two plus two gives a total of 14. And then we're going to implement this. It's not just the combinational cost in this case where we've got 14 gate costs for the combinational logic, but actually we require two more flip-flops. This is the implementation of that. On the left-hand side, you've got the equations from the previous page. So this is the D naught, Y zero being the output there. Okay, so that's the end of that part now. In the next part, we're going to talk briefly about more flip-flop types, such as JK and T flip-flops.